Well, I'm, I'm seeing that we're all here and I see that Liz is here, so we should get started. So good to see you all. I want to thank Liz Gaffey from the town clerk for being here with us. I know that there probably are some questions or concerns that people have about the upcoming election. So I'm thrilled Liz can join us. Just as a reminder, if you don't want your video shown on cable, make sure you turn off your video through the options menu at the bottom. And Liz, welcome. We're so glad to have you. We'll mute thank you, everyone. Happy, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Um, yes. well, willing to answer any questions that you have and hopefully set you straight for the election on June 27th. Anybody well, have questions? Oh, we muted everyone. <laughs> any guidelines that people should be aware of if they are planning to come and vote in person? Yes, so I just put that in. Um, an informational piece in the hometown weekly that should show up next week if that's what you're looking to do um let me find that um i also have sent out uh it's it's a thing a know before you go to the polls so it'll, the ad will look something like this um so what it is is you will see it should you decide to show up at the polls on june 27th um, each polling location uh, will be set up with one-way traffic uh, with cones to guide the voter for um, en entering and exiting the polling location. Uh, there will also be signs and floor markings indicating the six-foot social distancing that's required. Um, we are strongly encouraging, per the governor's order, that everybody comes in with a mask. Uh, marking pens will be provided, but if you're uncomfortable using my marking pens, uh, you can bring your own black. Uh, black is the best color, no other color. Blue could be used. Black is the best. Uh, either a, a ballpoint pen or the most optional is the, a flare pen. And hand sanitizers will be at the entrances and the exits. I will have a greeter there that will move you from the line into the available voting booth. Understand to keep the six foot voting distance um, social distancing for voting, we will have removed some of the voting booths or only allowing two to vote at each voting booth. Uh, they will be um, X'd off on the sides that you cannot use. Um, so if you're going to go to the polling locations, do expect some lines because we can only let you go in as there's time. Uh, there will be a custodian at each of the polling locations sanitizing the booths periodically and sanitizing the pens. So with your ballot, you will get a pen. And then when on your way out, as you put your ballot through the tabulator, uh, you will then deposit your pen, which then will be uh, sanitized to be used again. Um, hopefully everyone being in good health, if you choose to go to the polls, we'll keep everybody safe. Um, expect the poll workers will be wearing masks, gloves, face shields, and there will be a barrier on the table to protect them and, and the voter. And of course, anytime you have any questions, you can give a call to the town clerk's office. Thank you, Liz. Um, I saw a note in chat that there were some questions submitted. Debbie, do we have those questions? Hi, there was just the one um, that I sent over to Liz earlier from Sendaya. I'm Sendaya, I can unmute you if you want to ask that. Hi, Liz from Sunday Kalor. Hi. Hi, I wanted to find out that if we had submitted our application for an absentee ballot because of the coronavirus and we don't receive it, can we still go and do early voting at town hall or? show up on the day? Uh, so we're talking an absentee ballot, right? Yes, but I, but if I don't receive my the ballot in time, can I- I hope, did vote? you, okay. So just to take care of a couple of things, as long as you have already mailed it to me, I should have received it and you will be getting it. Okay. Um, hopefully that's not gonna be an issue. That will be an issue if you wait uh, too long. You have to understand, I cannot physically give you the ballot. We have to mail it. So please allow time to either drop your application into the drop box at the town hall or put it in the mail, but understand we have to mail you the ballot. So you want to be um, 
extra cognitive of that because if you ask me for it on the 23rd, that's a pretty tight timeline for that to turn around back to you because you are legally allowed to ask me for it up to noontime on the 26th of June. Now, I have to put that in the mail. I just can't promise you you're going to have it. The Postal Service is saying that they need a week each way. So with that, which is why we've been pushing for quite a while, for probably um, six weeks now to vote by mail and vote or, you know, ask for that option early. So how we're doing it, if I receive your application today, your ballot goes out tomorrow. And that's how we've been running. So if you mailed it Friday and I got your application Monday, you got the, the ballot went out to you Tuesday. We seem to be, um, we've moved out over 700 applications have been mailed out and we're just waiting on the ballots to come back. So it's just a matter of time there. Now to answer your other question, if you should apply for an absentee and, as, and it doesn't get back to me and I don't have it to process, an absentee voter can vote in person at the polls. Uh, as, lo as long as I haven't processed it at the polling location already. Should you be an early voter and I've received back your ballot, even though I didn't process it through the tabulator, you cannot vote at the polls. Okay. Okay, so if you're an absentee and you didn't get it back to me or you did get it back to me, but I didn't put it through the polling location, you can vote at the polls. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a good question. So it feels important too, just to remind people of the process for applying to receive one of those absentee ballot applications. We have sent out some information through our emails about that, but I don't know if you want to just review again briefly, Liz, that process that you need it in writing that request. Absolutely. So for absentee voting, um, I also have the PSA on the town clerk's website that you can see me in person telling you all those, but just to um, condense it and make it just a little bit easier, um, as long as you um, fill out an application, or it doesn't have to be the application, as long as you put in writing that you would like us to send you an absentee ballot, um, and you have signed the, the request, that's what we're looking for. For an absentee ballot, you are eligible for an absentee if you are gonna be out of town on election day, if you are unable to come to the polls because you had a physical disability, as well as the new, under the new, um, emergency declaration if you are um, don't want to come out because of COVID-19 or it's against your religious beliefs. Those are the three reasons to apply for an absentee ballot. So you can either use the application which you can get online on the town web on the town clerk's page on the website or uh, you can just write a note to us and, and put that in. You can mail it or you can drop it in the drop box which is located on the rear side of the uh, town hall on the driveway side. There's signs there indicating where the drop box is. The early voting application is a no excuse vote by mail. You need no excuse like you do on the absentee ballot. So if you um, just want to vote by mail because that's what you just want to do, you need no excuse and you can get it same way. You can either fill out the application or you can put it in writing on just a piece of paper requesting that we send you the ballot application. Everything needs to be signed. That way we know it's from you because we can compare it to your signature on file. So also to make your lives a little easier, if, if computer technology is a little bit tough, um, we do have both applications outside in a container that you can come to the town hall and just pick it up. There's both the absentee and the um, early voting. The other thing, both of them tell you the eligibility requirements. So if you don't remember what I said, the reasons why you can vote absentee are on the absentee ballot application, as with the, re the no reasons needed for the early vote application. So all that information is there. So if you, or you can call the office, not our favorite way because we're busy, but you're more than welcome, call the office and we'll mail you out an application. So. Um, those are the ways that you can do it. I strongly recommend that you do it so that you don't deal with the lines that will possibly be created on election day. Just so everybody knows, the hours are 8 to 5 on Saturday, June 27th. 
So um, that's the day we're going to be looking to do it. And if you if you mail us it, your your ballots will be counted on that day. Thanks, Liz. Does anyone else have any other questions about town election and the process? Can I ask one more question, Carrie? Of course. Um, Sunday again, Liz. I just wanted to find out when is early voting? Is there early voting for town elections as well? Normally, uh, early voting is only for the federal elections, and we usually have that in person. It's an in-person early voting, and that's why the rules are a little bit different for that as opposed to absentee. Okay. But because of the COVID-19, um, the special emergency declaration allows early voting only by mail for this uh, municipal election. So it's only by mail, not in person. Okay. Liz, we can put that PSA, I'm seeing it on your website. We can put that into the next um, update that we provide over email. We did provide a link before to get the application, but that way um, we can get that PSA in front of even more people for you. That would be awesome. I think that will take care of any questions a lot of people have. It, it right. slowly goes through all of it, and um, I think it would answer any questions. So it'll definitely go over what I just said as well. And we have the three polling locations. This is Janet. Hi, um, just a quick question. We have three voters in my household. Does each one have to mail the um, request separately? Yes. I need one okay. from every voter who wants to vote. Okay. Any voter who wants to vote. I, that's, you can pick up three applications here at the town hall. Each one of them can write me a note and you can put it all in one envelope, three different notes, one envelope, and mail that to me that way if you want or three requests for app applications. I need a signature from everybody. Okay. You can write one note, um, have them each copy your note, and then they can sign their own name. So I need your name and your address so we know where we're sending it. Um, okay. You can put the three requests in one envelope, but you can either mail it or you can drop it in the drop box. We're emptying that constantly all day. Okay, great. Thank you. No problem. Hello. That's a good question. Yes, it was. Hello, can I ask a question? Of course. Okay, I never know whether I'm muted or talking, whatever. Um, we hear you, Joanne. Okay, the hours are eight to five for voting. Was there some consideration to being eight to four? Um, hi, Joanne. Um, there was a hi. lot of there was a lot of conversation about the hours for it. I, I don't I don't recall if eight to four was one of them, um, I, but that's what they decided on was eight to five. I thought I I watched uh, Jim Johnson give one of his reports recently, and I could have sworn he said eight to four. So I've been telling people it's eight to four, but but now well that'll I'm, definitely get them there anyway. <laughs> That's it's eight sure. to five. Yeah, it's eight to five. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions that people have about the upcoming election and the process? Me. Hi, I'm Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. No, they had me muted. Okay. okay. I just wanted to ask um, if if you get the application to vote early. Do you have to have a reason for doing it? Early voting, for an early ballot voting, um, and for the application, that's the no excuse. You oh, can just, okay. That's no the excuse. no excuse. Okay, no so excuse. I can pick one up down the town hall and just use it. Okay. Yes, you can. Thank the application you very much. is there. Yeah, the application is down here at the town hall outside so that you can grab it that way. You can write me a note from your home and just say, I would like an early voting, early ballot, uh, an early voting ballot. And we will send that out to you. Just make sure you sign whatever, whichever way you let me know what you want, make sure you sign it. Or otherwise we okay. gotta send it back to you. And that's the other important part that I can't stress enough. When you return the ballots to me with the envelope with your ballot in it, you need to sign that as well. Otherwise we gotta send you another ballot. So make sure you're signing everything, okay? Your signature is what gets you to vote. Okay? okay. That's the important part, either absentee or early voting. You need to sign that inner envelope that you put your ballot in when you mail it back. Okay. okay? There's a place. We do have it highlighted. Some people do miss that highlighted piece. But remember, I need a signature to give you an application, and yeah. I need a signature to accept your ballots. Okay. Thank okay. you. 
You're welcome. I'm voting for Carrie, Debbie, <laughs> and Sherry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's very busy for Liz and her team right now, so I'm sure everyone echoes my thoughts of gratitude for all the work that you've done to put this together so quickly at such a, a challenging oh. time, providing such great education to everyone, um, and you know, answering so many questions and PSAs, putting things out at the Dropbox. Thank you. I'm sure everyone's feeling that yes, way. Yes, thank you. I hope so. And I'm hoping we'll be making this a very easy process for you through the pandemic. And my staff is awesome on getting them out to you. So hopefully all of you, if you've asked, you've received it or you're in the process of receiving it. Where We hope to leave no voter behind. We want everybody to vote. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Any other last minute questions for Liz? Thank you so much, Liz. Really appreciate it. And this is recorded for cable, so this will get posted to probably before the election. Um, again, it echoes a lot of the other information you've done, but it'll be out there on cable for our seniors to see as well. That's perfect. That's great. And just know if you think of a question after this Zoom meeting, feel free to call the town clerk's office. We're at 508-660-7296. Thank you all and enjoy your day. Thank, Thank you, Liz. You. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. How's everyone else? Everyone else hanging in okay? Yeah, it looks like Phil's having trouble with his audio. Um, well, um, next week we have Mike from the Building Commissioner. He's going to be on to speak about dealing with contractors. So that would be interesting. Hopefully you'll join us there. Carrie, have you heard anything about when the senior centers are going to be able to open or have we not? We're, we're waiting on guidance from the governor. The, um, the last statement he said is that people 65 and older are still urged to stay at home. So oh. I haven't heard anything else. We are all working on plans for reopening and there's a lot being done at the state level to help us make determinations about you know, new procedures when we are able to reopen and what it will look like, but I don't I hope, have any, I hope any you, details. I hope you're not going to be putting up plexiglass around the pool table. <laughs> I don't know how we would do that. <laughs> <laughs> be off the to play pool by putting up a plexiglass around that. Just stay tuned for more info as it becomes available. I, I don't have a date or specifics yet. Jerry, are you at Fenway Park today? Um, I added Fenway Park to my background so that I have like three different pictures of, of um, Fenway Park. And I have some others. Um, some will be of tigers, some will be of lions, and some will be of horses. And this morning I just added some sailboats. Interesting, huh? So, um, I, I saw I, you yesterday at Abigail Adams. Joanne, how was Abigail Adams? Abigail I Adams. Thought she was, I thought she was terrific <laughs> yesterday. She was she absolutely was. phenomenal. I saw her once at the Canton um, Senior Center, and I forgot who she did, but she did know Abigail Adams. She did somebody else. And so yesterday was the second time I've seen her, and she is absolutely phenomenal when she reenacts these different people. It's very interesting. It was, it, was, it, was, it was really great. We do know a lot about Abigail Adams. In fact, I'm reading a book about her right now. And it, this is just sort of a coincidence that this program was on at the same time yesterday. But I, I really enjoyed it. And it looks like she does uh, you know, imitate or uh, do several different people. Well, somebody's holding up a sign. I will reboot my system. <laughs> Oh, Phil. <laughs> so funny. Um, I think Linda had a question she wanted to ask about um, the upcoming book club. Let's see if I can unmute her. Linda, you have to. Okay. okay. There you go. No, I am. Um... I um, signed up for the book club. I um, called the library. And had Great. The book, the book was delivered yesterday, and it looks very Great. good. 
Hold on a minute. I'll get the cover of it so you can see it. I have. To, I I also signed up, and 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 the director of the library was was the one delivering the books. <laughs> oh, I yeah. know. Mine too. I said, oh, it's called there the it Atomic City Girls. And um, it looks like a good book. I know, and it's about well, you you gave a narrative on your robocall, but it's about for those that didn't hear it or maybe uh, um, would like to know about it. It's about um, people that, especially women, I think it's really a women's book, but in terms of the storyline, but it's about um, a place that was secret in the Oak, in Oak Ridge, Tennessee during the war. And I'm not sure I haven't, I don't want to be a spoiler. So it's it, what went on there during the war and what the, um, the women and the men and the whoever else was there, what they were working on and how they were working for the government. So I'm anxious to start reading it. I'm trying to hold back. I don't want to read too much before the club starts. <laughs> so, oh, no, I think well, the you club has started. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So that's our first. Oh, okay. I get we'll it. We'll be so discussing been... the book at the first meeting. So oh, yes, okay. read away. Oh, I'll get going then. <laughs> But it looks very easy to read, you know, and I'm, I'm not a proficient reader, but I hope to be. That's why I signed up. So anyway, the other thing I want to know is how's the walking club? What's that doing? Because I almost joined that, but then I, I have a uh, sciatica issue. So I had to cancel those plans, but I need I need more motivation. I try to do everything online, you know, the, but some days it doesn't work. Yeah, you could still sign up, Linda. And even if you did like a 10 minute walk a day, it really, um, it's all very individual. I will yeah. say that the first week I was completely blown away by some of the minutes that some of you walk. I thought I was a walker. I had people doing triple the amount that I walk. Um, so you've really given me some motivation, all of you. Um, but we have, I think, close to 30 people who've joined now. And all you have to do is just, I see Carrie's holding up her log. She's been walking. I've been dragging my boys with me. Um, you just need to log how many minutes you walk each day and then total it for the week. Um, and just, you know, keep in mind your own goals. You can add five minutes a week, 10 minutes a week, whatever you want to do for yourself. Um, and then at the end, we'll have some drawings and prizes. Everybody that's signed up to walk will be entered to win. Um, for those who've walked the most minutes, um, those who've improved um, the most over the course of the weeks. Um, so I definitely encourage you to do it, even if you're, you only can walk a little bit, Linda. It's not a problem. I'm mm -hmm. walking in the house. <laughs> that counts too. That counts too. You know, we don't yeah. have the, the, well, I guess the malls are just opening now, but the mall walkers and all those places to go. Yeah. And Debbie yeah. and I are taking turns or together going to try and take some walks on Friday. A lot of people might have seen the one we did right on the path right here oh, at the rail yeah. trail last that was Friday. Nice. That was, was a nice. nice walk. So I hope we can take you to some new places that maybe you haven't tried before, inspire some new walking locations. I'm just curious to know about the pace. What's the pace like? In other words, I'm a slow walker, real slow. And oh, it's I, your own pace. You're doing this yourself. So it's it's really uh -huh. to keep you accountable to yourself and your own goals, uh -huh. Linda. So okay. it's it's in no way a, a competition. Um, I have yeah. already found it helpful in making me accountable to myself oh. for walking each day so that I can't say, oh, I'll just yeah. do it tomorrow. Yeah. That video was but, great, Carrie. Yeah, it oh, was. Good. Yeah. yeah it, we I had felt fun. like it was. I felt like I was walking with you. Good. <laughs> I don't know That's as if I can idea. walk that far. Well, maybe um, we can show you some new places. Did anyone see the parade they had for the senior class at Walpole High School once I, last I, Sunday? I saw, I did see it on TV. Lots of pictures. I did see it on TV. I, oh. I saw it. We were there. Oh, good. <laughs> I was there too. I was down the end of South Street. I was and at a country kitchen. 
Oh, oh it, it was amazing the support that they got. It was so nice. It was so nice. And, um, you know, just nice. It feels good to know that we have so many talented young people. When I was reading all the signs on the cars about where they were going to school and everything, I got the, the most striking one for me was the person, uh, the young person that was going to Montana to college. I said, wow. oh, I'd never heard that one before. So I thought that was very interesting. Anyway. It's nice to see everyone come out to support them. I think they, they always have graduation and everyone knows it's happening, but the town doesn't get to do that. So I agree, yeah. really special. Yeah. I didn't, even I, know, I didn't even know that there was a college in, uh, in, there in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's probably a few of them. And I don't know if um, anybody's looking for a job but yeah. um, we had my my daughter in New York. Of course, New York is closed down still, but they're starting to reopen. But, um, you know, she's trying to plan the Christmas show for the Rockettes. And um, she has to keep them safe. And she has to follow all the guidelines. And I think the entertainers, the performers, even in the city of Boston, it's the same thing. They're probably going to be the last ones um, to, you know, to go back to work and all that. But there is a course offered online through the um, John Hopkins School of Public Health. And also it's a, the Bloomberg Group, too, is sponsoring it. And you can become what's called a COVID tracker. In other words, if you take the course and you, you know, pass it, you get a designation that you could go to work for a company or anyone else in, that needs you and actually monitor the COVID. In other words, with the Rockettes, my daughter would, if, if she had a Rockette that was symptomatic, she would know what she had to do to, to get her out of the crowd or to whatever. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be like one of those real jobs that's been created. And, you, and the um, salaries are not are, are going to be comparable. You know, I've heard the one quote that I heard is that it's probably going to be able to, you know, you're going to be able to make like $55,000 a year. Wow. So, I don't know, you probably have to work your fingers to the bone. So my daughter's doing that too, in case she has to leave entertainment. She'll be, she'll be signing up for something else. But I just thought it was interesting. And for about a half a second, I thought about it. But then I said, oh, no, I'm retired. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just miss everyone. It's so, you know, so hard to be away like this. I do too. I miss everyone and I miss the pool guys and 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 I miss the um, girls there in Mahjong and I, <laughs> and I miss my knitted girls. <clears throat> and I need help with my knitting so <laughs> I'm I'm kind of stuck right now. Mary, I need your help. <laughs> oh. Well, it's good to see everyone. I hope you'll join us for more Zoom programming and consider hopping in next week again, Zoom in, and it should be an interesting discussion with the, the buildings department. It was really oh, nice yeah. to make the offer. I think, I think they better hire a detail to be there about the building, the building committee with all the building that's going on. I know we're going to get a lot of questions about that. I'm, I'm expecting that you probably do have some questions about the West Street Project, Pennington. He can probably provide an update on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also think he might have some great ideas for questions you should be asking any contractor that you have coming to oh, do any that, work at your house. Absolutely. Absolutely. What things you should know and ask, which is always helpful information. And it seems now that all the things that you wanted to do 
that you mm-hmm. didn't have time to do. Now that you have the time, now you can't get the help. The help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. We've all spent a little bit of time at home to notice all the things we'd like to improve. I can't move the chairs up. The problem. Move my mouse far enough to click on it. Oh. Phil. That Phil who? Oh, problem is not me. Oh. All right. Carol, are you able to hear us? No. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. I do not if he has no audio. Oh, no, of course. I don't, oh, I don't think you can hear us either. No, he can't. No. Can I, I was going to offer him some help, but. <clears throat> but I can't. Uh, Debbie, I wonder if we can call him, maybe LIDAR, and, and see. Because yeah, if you go to. on the up arrow by mute, he might be able to uh, join with the computer audio there. <laughs> Do you want to message him on this to see if you can? Does he message? Read the chat. Yeah. The chat. Actually, I can't because I'm not one of the hosts. Oh, yeah, I don't think he can. Yeah, I can only do everyone. Uh, I'm gonna try something. Well, I'm gonna get off you guys. It was lovely to see all of you. Thank okay. you very much for hosting. Bye, Sandy. Bye, bye. I'm leaving. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye, bye Joanne. Bye, Joanne. Bye bye. Oh, we'll see everyone next oh. time. Oh, was Phil yes. gone? I oh. think Phil left. Yeah, yeah. I just went to oh. say. Oh, that's too bad. We'll try and help him. We'll check in with him. All right. Seems like a good uh, time to end our meeting. Everyone yeah. be well. Okay. Be safe in the Thank weather, you, everyone. You Thank too. You. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.